Greetings, Cyberdogs and citizens of the Interbubs, and welcome back to another solo episode of Sky Factory 3 with me, Ren Diggity Dog. We're flying, guys. We're freaking flying. <laughs> this is so epic. We got angel wings in the previous episode with Exuma, didn't we? And uh, this is making my life so much easier in Sky Factory. I can't even begin to tell you guys. Anyway, it's Saturday, which means it is a solo episode. It's just me on the server today. Exuma's recorded his own solo episode. No idea what he's been up to, but I'm sure it's freaking awesome. So I tell you what, guys, I'm gonna stick a link in the description box below. Make sure you go check out his episode at the end of this one, okay? But today, we've got some important work to get to. In our last solo episode we were trying to set up an epic bacon factory weren't we and uh, it came to a point where we realized it wasn't going to work out the way that we planned because there's too many freaking ingredients so take a look at this i've done a little bit of work to our little current factory design i've redesigned it i still need to do a whole bunch of like plugging in and configuration and i think we're going to do that today if i can get this all set up properly by the end of this episode we're going to be generating epic bacon and it's going to be sweet man Never will have to worry about food in a sky factory again. Now, I don't actually know if I have everything that I need for this episode just yet. I was so excited to start recording that I just hit the record button. So I tell you what, guys, give me a moment to get myself prepared. And then we're going to automatically produce epic bacon. And it's going to be, well, freaking epic. I really hope that I'm not the only modded player on this planet that has this problem. But whenever the Rendog conceptualizes a modded factory build like this one, I always end up making it so much more complicated than it needs to be, man. Jeez, I'm such a freaking derp. I've been on the server now for about an hour and a half trying to solve the problems we were having in the last solo episode with regards to the automatic generation of epic bacon. I think I've managed to solve it, guys, but we have got a lot of configuring to do today. It's it's going to be pretty awesome if we can get this thing up and running, which is the plan for today. But listen, before we get to that, guys, I need to say a massive thank you to all of you guys that have been supporting my solo episodes here on my Sky Factory uh, series with Exumavoid. The last solo episode I did last weekend got over 20,000 views. Guys, that's absolutely incredible and absolutely amazing for a series like this on my, on my channel. Uh, so thank you guys so much for the amazing support on my solo episodes here. It means so very much. It gets me so inspired and pumped up when I see those kinds of numbers. Thank you guys so much, man. You went mental on the views, on the likes and the comments. And oh, it just makes me so motivated and so happy to be alive doing what I'm doing. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, by the way, for all of the hints and tips on improving the Epic Bacon Factory. I've, in fact, employed some of your ideas here. And I'm going to take you through that now. So check it out. What we are trying to produce is something called Epic Bacon. We're trying to create a factory that automatically produces Epic Bacon. To make this jazz, we need cooked pork chops, red dye, orange dye, yellow dye, green dye, cyan dye, purple dye, and magenta dye. <laughs> So a ridiculous amount of different dyes. Last solo episode, we were using this little flower farm over here to generate dandelions and poppies for red and white, and uh, for red and yellow, excuse me. And that, of course, was giving us um, access to orange and magenta and all of the different colors also. But we were unable to organize the production of that dye. And that is why I have set up, well, what looks to be like a little factory array over here, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys a little bit more about this in a moment. I just want to take you over here first. This thing that you see over here, this is going to be the final output production thing that is going to make the epic bacon, okay? The final crafting of the epic bacon is going to be happening in this crafter over here, and this small storage crate is going to be the, the place where all of the different dyes and materials arrive for the epic bacon. The epic bacon itself is going to be coming out in this small storage crate. So this is our output right here, and this factory is designed to make epic bacon come into this storage crate over here. Now, we've got a couple of things that work, and the rest of the things don't work. We've got a power supply over here using lava generators and capacitor banks. We've got our basically our orange purple uh, orange dye farm over here producing poppies and dandelions to be made into purple and we've got our cactus farm over here that is making lime green. What we don't have are the following colors purple, pink, 
and cyan. Those are the colors that we don't currently have access to, and those are the colors that we need to get really organized to create. That's what we're going to be doing today. Now, I have spent a little bit of time thinking about these chickens over here. Over the last week or so, Exumavoid and I have been setting up this massive chicken farm over here, this disgusting, stinky, noisy platform. But the amazing thing about this chicken farm is that it has some very interesting outputs. Take a look at this. So our chickens are currently producing a, a, a lot of dye that we could potentially use over here. In fact, all of the colors for Epic Bacon are coming out of the butts of these chickens, which is amazing. There's also something else coming out the butts of these chickens, and that something is called manure. And manure can be used as bone meal inside of, well, anything. It basically functions as bone meal. So, in the spirit of recycling, everyone, I want to try and find a way to efficiently use the byproducts coming out of these chickens' buttholes to fuel our Epic Bacon factory and get this thing fired up like nobody body's business producing epic bacon 24 hours a day baby oh man now i'm getting all pumped up and freaking excited about this okay the best way to do this i think guys is to literally go one color at a time right so we're going to start with orange over here then we'll do red then we'll do purple pink uh, cyan green and then hopefully at the end of the episode we shall finally do epic bacon let's make it happen guys Mmm, epic bacon, I can taste thee already. <laughs> Get in my freaking belly, baby. Oh, man. By the way, guys, just realized that I didn't turn on the day-night cycle for those of you guys who uh, care about that. I've just turned it on now, okay? So <laughs> that has been sorted. Now, let's start with orange. In the previous episode, we set up this little flower farm, didn't we? And uh, to get this sucker up and running, we just got to stick some bone meal in here. Uh, well, there is bone meal in here, but for some reason, it's not running. Oh, of course, we got to get the timer in there. There we go. And I probably want to set this timer to a little bit slower because right now it's going crazy now what this flower farm does for us uh, is it produces items that get sent into this storage crate a whole bunch of stuff the only ones we care about are uh, poppies and dandelions so let's do a little bit of um, cleanup over here i've put a trash can over here with uh, an item conduit and i've set up a filter over here with a poppy and a dandelion i'm going to set that to blacklist so it's going to send everything to the trash can other than the poppy and dandelion and let's turn this to always active we should now start seeing all of this other junk getting uh, sent to the trash can okay perfect now the next step is to get those poppies and dandelions into the sag mill which is currently set up over here and of course the last step that we need to do is extract the the um the dye that's being made in this sag mill into the crafter over here so let's set this to insert and this should be making for us orange dye yep i've got the recipe uh, cooking over here so there we go uh this is filling up with red dye it needs to fill up with uh, yellow dye at some point too. Uh, it's just red dye for now, but that's okay. It's going to do its business. Slowly but surely, it's going to set stuff up. Now, take a look at this little thing that we got over here, guys. This is plant clippings. This is another byproduct of our flower factory, and I worked out something pretty freaking awesome about these plant clippings. If we go over to the recipe for Epic Bacon and over to green dye, check this out. We can actually make green dye by smelting plant clippings and an egg inside of an alloy smelter and guess what we're getting loads of eggs from that platform over there so i've set up a little factory over here that we're going to connect today that is going to turn plant clippings and eggs into uh, green dye over here but we're going to do that in a moment first things though we need to get this orange dye that is sh well supposed to be made in here i think it can only get made once we have set up, uh, set up an extract from this crafter we're going to start sending that into this chest over here right so let's get down into the the, um, the workshop area of our platform and let's start running some cables oh man there we go so this is the chest that we want to get all of the dyes into eventually let's get that connected up to our little flower factory over here sweet and let's get this set to is this one set to insert correctly yeah that's it to insert and this one should be set to extract always active now our auto crafter should be cranking oh i know what it needs it needs some power doesn't it so let's run a little bit of a power cable like this and we'll connect that to uh, that auto crafter like a so. And let's have a look. This baby should be cranking out that orange. Oh, there we go. Look at that. It is cranking out the orange and sending that orange directly into this storage crate. Yep, there it is. Perfect. I am noticing some plant clippings over here too, though. So we're going to have to set up some sort of a filter uh, that's going to take the plant clippings from here to this factory. Anyway, that's orange done. Beautiful. One ticked off. 
Now, one of the biggest problems we were experiencing in the previous design of this dive factory is that we were coming up against some serious item bottlenecks that basically stifled the factory and, well, completely broke it. One of those bottlenecks is, of course, with red because red dye is by far the most used ingredient for Epic Bacon. It's used in orange dye, uh, purple dye, pink dye, and, of course, just as red inside of the recipe for Epic Bacon. And this little flower farm over here, man, this is just not cutting the mustard, not producing enough red to satisfy the needs of our dye factory. A few of you out there though are super smart and you guys let me know that we can make a ridiculous amount of red just using some casual beetroot action. And check this out, I've made a little machine over here that is going to be generating hopefully enough red to feed all of the hungry dye factories that we got set up over there uh, to generate the ingredients for Epic Bacon. So what we got over here, we got some beetroot growing, beetroots growing on some tilled soil, <laughs> which I just broke. So good job there, Ren. Luckily, I've got this awesome tool uh, that we could just do that and replant those beetroots. And uh, next to these beetroots, we've got these mechanical users. These mechanical users are going to be fed with bone meal from this bone meal input. And they are going to be growing and breaking uh, beetroots over and over again. Now, check this out. I've also installed three crushers from Extra Utilities here. And what crushers do are very, very cool. Check this out. Let's stick some beetroot in here. And a crusher will literally crush a beetroot into two red dye. I think we should probably speed upgrade these uh, crushes also, but that is hopefully going to produce enough red dye for us uh, to be able to generate or uh, to feed, should I say, all of the other dye factories in our factory over here. So let me get this thing uh, fired up and set up, and then we'll see if we're generating enough freaking red dye. Oh man, I always get so freaking nervous when testing a modded factory for the first time. I have no idea whether I've set this up correctly, all of the item conduits, connections, and whatnot. <laughs> actually kind of complicated to get it all working. However, I think I've done it right. Let's go through how this bad boy is supposed to work, okay? So we've got bone meal coming from here. This is going to go into the backs of these uh, mechanical users over here. Those mechanical users are going to grow the beetroot. The beetroot is going to get broken and sent up into the crushers from the tops of the mechanical users. The crushers are going to squish that beetroot into red dye, and that red, be uh, that red dye is going to follow this output pipe over here. Now let's follow this output pipe into the basement. This output pipe is going to two locations. The first location is going to be the main dye storage crate up here at the Epic Bacon Factory, and the second and third locations for that red dye are going to be our mini dye factories up here. Now check this out. I've configured these factories in such a way that I think we'll be able to make this super efficient. Both of the red dye drawers are right next to each other, so that red dye is going to be coming up this pipe and going into these drawers, hopefully evenly. Also into this one evenly too. Now we can make sure that it is, as, it is as even as possible by using something called round robin. So the red dye is going to be sucked out of the crushes up here and what we're going to do is we're going to turn round robin on uh, at these output uh, points over here and what that is going to do is going to send that red dye evenly to the places that the red dye can go to. So the red dye can go to this storage crate, to this drawer and this drawer and these crushes or these, these uh, item conduits should in theory fairly distribute that red dye across all those different places. Let's just turn this off. It's driving me freaking crazy. All right. Well, there's one last thing to do, and that is to turn this one on. Let's see if our little red dye factory is going to work, okay? All of that bone meal should now be going into the mechanical users. Come on, you little bastards. Okay, we got we to gotta set up these freaking uh, mechanical users, though, to, I believe... Uh, use item on block. There we go. Okay, so use item on block. Oh, also, it looks like we need to set this to round robin too, so it distributes evenly amongst the mechanical users. Okay, there we go. Those are working beautifully. Let's just get these to use item on block also. There we go. So we should see all of them now. Oh, fire and away. Look at all of those beetroots getting freaking produced. That's amazing. And our crushers should be filling up. They're not filling up right now, which means I have done something wrong. Oh, I know what I've done. I'm such an idiot. Do you remember earlier in this episode when I said Rendog makes things more complicated than they need to be? Well, that was a prime example of that in action. 
freaking face pop. I'm such an idiot. I've had to reconfigure this entire machine over here because, of course, mechanical users don't pick up the items that they farm. We need to pick up those items with an item collector, don't we? And what was happening is the item collector for the cactus farm was sucking up those beetroots. So I've moved that over here to the cactus farm. So the cactus farm is over here. And, of course, our beetroot farm is over here. I've added another item collector to a chest. This is picking up uh, the beetroots and the beetroot seeds. The beetroot seeds are being sent into this trash can because I've got item filters on the crushes that are only accepting beetroots. And these crushes should be working. Yes, we can see the lights flickering. Excellent. Now all we need to do is set the outputs of the crushes to round robin like a so they are producing red dye out of beetroot now. Yes, they are beautiful. And hopefully this should start getting taken out once we actually turn the output nodes on. <laughs> this is such a complicated factory. It's ridiculous. Okay, there we go. So the crushes should be sending that red dye. Perfect. Now we should be seeing red dye landing in a number of different areas. Should be landing here. Looks like it's getting here. That's yes. Okay, so two red dye just hit the main dye crate over there and we should be seeing these ones also picking up. Hopefully we've got 43 red dye in this basic drawer. Come on, baby. Come on. Have I set everything up? Correctly. This is set to insert. Yes, perfect. 43. Um, this looks to have a lot of red dye in it, but there we go. It's going up. Okay, sweet. So the red dye is working and we can see those beetroots getting farmed and popping up and getting sucked up into the chest below. Okay, excellent. Red is sorted. Next up, purple. Okay, guys, there's surely no freaking way that the Ren Dog can mess this one up, right? We're trying to make purple, and it's super easy. Some lapis, some red dye, and a crafter. Boom, bam, thank you, ma'am. We got purple dye. I guess the complicated bit comes in the extraction of this jazz, but check it out. Got me item conduits. Going to be sucking out the ingredients, sticking them into the item crafter, and that is going to be making purple dye for us. Let's get into the workshop. Yep, I've got my power into my crafter. Perfect. Now what we're going to try and do is figure out how to get that purple purple dye out of this drawer. We're going to do that quite easily with these item conduits like this, but we don't want these connections over here. So let's get the Yeta wrench out and let's disconnect that. Perfect. And what we could do is probably run uh, a line into there. And now that is connected into the main output line, right? So hopefully what should be happening here is that the purple is going to get sucked out of the drawer and sent into the storage crate up there that holds all of the dyes for Epic Bacon. Now there's one thing that we need to make sure that we're doing over here, guys, and that is adding filters into our inputs over here. Because the way that these item conduit networks work is if there is an item in the conduit network, so in the pipe, it's going to look for the first available spot or the, the, the most obvious spot for it to go. And that is where it's going to go, right? So whenever we have a connection like this, we need to make sure to tell the item conduit input node that it is only to accept red dye. So it's not going to be able to accept anything else. The reason why this is relevant is because, of course, What's going to happen here at the uh, the purple drawer is there's go we're going to run out of purple here, right? It's going to eventually get completely sucked out. And then the item conduit network is going to recognize uh, a drawer like this as an available spot for an item. Luckily, in this case, we're only extracting from that drawer. So no items can actually go into this one. However, there's other uh, boxes around here that can actually take other items. So we need to make sure we're always adding item filters into that uh, so that we don't end up with like a completely messed up network. Um, there we go. So the purple dye got sucked out. Beautiful. Now what we're going to do is actually test this out. And I think what I need to do, that's insert. I think I need to turn on these items to always active. Let's see if we're creating purple. Come on, baby. That should be going into the item crafter. There we go. Okay, so purple is getting created. Let's speed uh, speed it up to fast. And we should be seeing the purple. Uh, well, it's going to be going into this basic drawer, but it's going to be uh, getting directly sucked out of that drawer into here. And there we go. The purple is... Well, not really arriving. Hold on. Oh, this needs to go into insert. Okay, there we go. Um, what's going on here? Always active. Oh, it wasn't even sucking out the purple. Jeez, I derped it up. Anyway, there we go. We can see the purple flashing, and that should make it work. Uh, let's have a look. There we go. Loads of purple landing up in our small storage crate. Sweet. Purple done.
This time, there will be no derpage. Pink is next, guys, and exactly like purple, all we need to do is combine some red and some bone meal inside of a crafter, and boom, we got some pink dye. Now check this out, I completely forgot about this little tool in my hand called a drawer key. And uh, essentially what a drawer key does is it locks the items into the drawer. Now I'm gonna show you guys exactly how this works. Take for example, if we take out this lapis over here, let's uh, unlock the key and take out the lapis, we can see that when this thing sucks lapis out of the drawer, Let's just stick like a few lapis in here, right? Let's put 32 lapis in there. You can see that it's being sucked into the item drawer, right? But what's going to happen is it's going to empty itself. Now, what we can do with the key is that we can actually lock the item to that drawer. So, for example, if we stick the lap lapis back in there, it's going to suck out all of the lapis, but it's going to leave one in there. Even though there's zero, it's going to keep this drawer as a lapis drawer. So we're going to do that for all of our little mini factories over here. That's going to make the whole network even more secure. There we go. Beautiful. Now, now, the red and the bone meal is going to get sucked into the auto crafter. The auto crafter is going to send the pink dye. Hold on, hold on. I can feel the derpage coming into. Let's turn this on. Always active. And this needs to be insert. The crafter is going to send the pink dye into the storage chest. And then the storage chest is going to extract. Let's turn this to always on down here. It's going to extract that pink dye and send it into the main network to go into the storage crate for the epic bacon. Okay. I definitely haven't derped this one up, man. This this is going to work, okay? Let's turn these on. Always active for the suckage. Go, 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 pink dye factory. Let's have a look. Yes, beautiful. Everything's getting sucked in and sucked out super fast. And we should see a bunch of pink landing in here. Yes, there is the pink. Awesome. Pink in the belly, baby. Okay, now it's getting a little bit more complicated and a little bit more interesting, Cyberdogs. Get your freaking thinking caps on, man. We're about to get technical over here. I've been cleaning up our item conduit network and... Uh, I've gotten rid of a whole bunch of redundant lines. So we should have a very clean functioning network now. Next up, we're making cyan. And of course, we do that by smelting down the cactus. We are getting from the Seth Green Cactus Farm, shoving that into a, an alloy smelter that cooks that into green dye. And we're going to start extracting this green dye over here. Always active. This is going to get extracted directly into the crafter of our cyan um, factory over here. So the crafter is getting its green dye direct from the source, which is awesome. It's also powered up over there and what this is going to do is going to generate that uh, cyan for us and it's going to it's going to pump it directly into the cyan chest over here, right? Then the cyan chest is going to extract that. So let's turn that to always on, uh, always active. It's going to extract that cyan directly into the main item conduit line that's going to take the cyan all the way over to the ingredients chest over there for the epic bacon. Is you know, is this making sense? You guys following? You're picking up what I'm putting down? <laughs> Next step of course and the final step for this, of course, is to get the um, the freaking lapi over here into the auto crafter itself, right? So that's going to be pretty simple to do. Let's get some item conduits down over here. Disconnect these connections uh, like a so. We'll disable this one too. Beautiful. Extract that lapis always. And this is going to be insert and boom, our crafter. Hang on. Oops. I'm changing the direction of it with the stupid freaking... Oh, the Yeta wrench. It should be receiving the lapai. Okay, awesome. Now, let's set up the recipe for cyan. There it is. Apply. And now we are cranking out that cyan like nobody's business. And we can see that it is getting sucked out into the network. Final check to see, is the cyan landing here in our storage crate? Boom, baby! Another color down the freaking drain! Get out of here, creeper! You freaking fool! Ooh! Monster Hunter! Nice! This is the part of the episode I've been waiting all day for, guys! Oh, this is gonna be so awesome. We're gonna make use of the resources coming out of the chicken farm to improve our epic bacon factory. We've got all of the colors working now, which is amazing, but there's one more color that we need to make, and that is green. And we need to make some more green, of course, because green is being used to make cyan, and we need to have green as a part of the epic bacon recipe. So I think that we need to have another source of green. And that green is going to be coming from our chicken farm. Take a look at this. I have set up a chest or a storage crate down here. And this is where we are going to be receiving all of the byproducts that are coming out of these chicken buttholes. And they are going to go directly into our, our farm. Now, firstly, I wouldn't mind grabbing all of the dyes out of here that we need right now, right? Because look at this. We have access to 
pretty much all of the dyes that we need in Epic Bacon. And what we're going to try and do is find a way to extract all of that jazz. What I've done over here is I've set up a storage crate with an item filter. And that item filter is filtering out all of the different dyes that we need, right? So that's working real good. We're going to find a way to get these dyes across to our platform in a moment. But let's go over to the other side of the chicken coop area. And this is the side where the eggs are being stored. I've set up another storage crate over here that's collecting eggs and also collecting manure because we're going to be able to use manure as bone meal in our factory. I've got a, a filter in here that is filtering out the chicken eggs and the manure. Now, next step is to get all of these items from our chicken coop over to our other uh, platform, over to the Epic Bacon platform. And I reckon a, a cool way to do that would be to come down here. Okay, wait a minute. This might be a little bit on the dangerous side. Let's just break all of these like so. Okay, let's go to the other side. Now that we can fly, it's much easier for us to uh, run cables and stuff underneath the platforms, right? To keep everything nice and neat. So let's fall down. Okay, Whew, man, <laughs> there we go. Now what we can do is run an item conduit all the way from here, connecting all the way to this side, to these storage crates. And what we'll do is we'll pump all of these items coming out of these chickens into that one central um, item uh, chest or that storage crate on our platform. And then we can take it from there. Then we can start sorting all of the items into their various positions. Oh, this is going to be so epic. How many of you noticed the absolutely massive derp that I've been doing this entire freaking episode? I'll give you a moment. I've been making the wrong freaking dye. I was making pink dye when I was supposed to be making magenta. I'm such a fool. Anyway, easily fixed, added a drawer for lapis into the recipe. And of course, magenta is made from lapis, bone meal, and red. So yeah, at least I fixed that. The problem is that we've wasted a bunch of resources here. Made a bunch of pink over here, which absolutely sucks. The good news is though, guys, I think I have got our chicken platform connected up to our epic bacon platform. What a sentence that is. And I think it's going to work out real good. Check this out, guys. Oh, this is so awesome. We've got this item conduit line running all the way underneath the platforms. All of those items are getting pumped out of the chicken platform into the epic bacon platform. And what we should see is a storage crate full of good stuff. Yes, we got eggs. We got uh, plant and clippings and trimmings, which we'll get when we turn on the flower factory. We got all of these dyes. Now, what we're going to do is start sending these items in the correct directions. In this direction, we're going to be sending eggs and uh, plant clippings so that that can make green dye. So let's turn that on. There we go. That should start sucking out those eggs and putting them into that auto crafter machine up there. Perfect. This output line is going to be sending the manure into our flower factory and our beetroot factory. So let's turn that on. Sweet. The, sh the manure should start getting sucked out. Beautiful. And this final one over here should then extract all of the dyes that we are getting from the chickens. Oops. Uh, so let's turn that to all always active and that's going to send those dyes directly into our epic bacon recipe chamber up here yes there's the green that's awesome that we're getting a bunch of green and also i realized that we also needed to get a little bit more yellow right because well <laughs> we are, we're not generating any yellow other than in our poppy farm and actually that makes me a little bit worried we need to find a way to generate more yellow um i guess we'll make do with the yellow coming out of the chicken for now but that's okay uh well dang it we need to find a way to make yellow. This is it, guys. The final test of our brand new epic bacon factory. And if this doesn't work, I think I'm going to smash my head into the side of a wall. I have been at this all day long. And all I want is some epic bacon in my freaking belly. Is that too much to ask? Seriously now. Uh, this storage crate over here should have every single die that we need to create epic bacon. And, well, there's only one thing left to do. And that is, of course, to cook the raw pork chops into pork chops so that they can become a part of the epic bacon recipe. And I've got the recipe over here ready to rumble. We just need those cooked pork chops as the final ingredient. So check it out. I have configured this alloy smelter to receive raw pork chops from the drawer above and then to push the, pork, the cooked pork chops into the crafter and that is hopefully going to be uh, the way that we can get pork chops into the system let's just lock this and start sticking in those raw pork chops there we go those should go into the alloy smelter beautiful getting power from the system of course and let's just make sure we're not losing power okay awesome so our little uh, double lava generator mk1 is good enough to power all of the uh, machines in this factory so that's really cool to know anyway that should be generating some pork chops for us there we go beautiful next up we need to enable 
the ingredients to go from here into the freaking epic crafting table machine of awesomeness. And I've just realized something. I don't know how we're going to do this. Should we change this to round robin or something? Is that going to... Because basically what's going to happen is it's just going to start pulling the items from up here. So maybe what we need to do is actually arrange it in this way, right? I'm just going to have to do this manually for now, I suppose. Uh, let's just get all of the dyes that we need in the top row because I just realized what's going to happen. It's just going to start pulling orange. Oh, the Ren Diggity Dog was one step ahead of you guys out there you didn't see that happening did you okay so it's gonna go it's gonna pull in all of those those are the uh the dyes that we need oh don't forget about the magenta um i mean sorry the cyan okay so we're ready to start pulling the dyes from the storage crate into the freaking crafter let's do this thing always active we should start seeing the ingredients landing up in here very slowly but surely i might need to add a couple of speed upgrades to this one but that's okay. I guess what I can do now is just start sorting them also over here. It doesn't look like Round Robin does anything. Also, we are severely lacking in green right now, I've just noticed. And this one doesn't seem to be sending its green product into the system. Yep, just noticed that too, didn't you? Okay, so let's just make sure that the green we are creating from the eggs and the trimmings are actually going into the system. Let's turn this to always active. That's going to send a little bit more green. But it looks like we've come up against a pretty serious bottleneck over here guys and that's green <laughs> we're not gonna have enough green here uh, to produce epic bacon around the clock we're gonna have to find a way to make some more um, cacti while that ep epic bacon is cooking let me just make sure all of this is working right yeah that is cooking that is extracting okay so green is being produced just really really slowly okay come on now baby come on epic bacon you know you can do this you know you can make the bacon what is it missing oh I just saw some epic bacon being made over there Let's have a look. We've got 27 epic bacons already out of the factory. That's amazing. You know what I want to do? I want to get hungry right now. I want to get the Baconator on my person. Here's the Baconator. I want to jump around a little bit. Let's do some running. Let's run around. Let's jump. Let's get hungry. I want to see the Baconation and epic bacon in action. I don't know about you guys, man, but I'm freaking starving right now. I would love me a little bit of epic bacon. I ah, thank you. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Oh, look, we got some epic epic bacon okay so if the theory is correct if we stick the epic bacon in the inventory we'll automatically eat right let's pick up the epic bacon and let's have a look is the baconator doing its business come on baconator do your work what are you up to do we need to stick it in the inventory itself um hello okay it is enabled so it should be eating at some point maybe we need to sort of walk around a little bit does it need to be in the offhand let's see how do we make this baconator work come on baby you know you can do this baconator what's happening if i oh there we go you have to hold down shift and right click and look at that he is eating away isn't he oh do i have to hold him if i hold him in the offhand is he going to eat for me i don't know doesn't look like it interesting what about now okay so you got to hold him in your on hand and look at that man he is munching away isn't he that's awesome um okay hold on if i right click left click what's happening oh there we go okay so you actually eat the baconator itself and then it eats the food out of the inventory so not quite as well not quite as good as I thought it was going to be. I thought the Baconator would actually eat for me. But, oh, look what it's done. It's actually stored the Epic Bacon. Oh, there we go. It's got 38 out of 64 Epic Bacon stored. So, I guess it uh, it means you don't have to hold a whole bunch of food in your inventory if you got the Baconator and Epic Bacon, right? Well, that's pretty cool, I suppose. But, uh, I guess what's even more cool is that we now have Epic Bacon. And you know what, man? I want to I want to give Exuma a bit of Epic Bacon, too, the next time he logs on. So, here you go, X. In the end, it's... In the ender sack is some epic bacon for you and uh yeah that's our epic bacon factory up and running maybe not so efficiently but it's freaking running that's just about gonna do it from me today guys on my solo sky factory episode and wow i think this is probably gonna be a super long one if you're stuck around all the way to the end thank you i hope you enjoyed all the derps and face palms we got our epic bacon factory working although a little bit inefficiently i must say and hopefully there's something we can do about that and generate a bit more green I need to go outside, guys. My brain is an absolute mess. This project has taken it out of me. And I need some fresh freaking air. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode with Exuma Void. And we'll be cranking open some chance cubes and getting up to some mischief. Should be good fun. Thanks for watching, guys. Rendigity Dog signing out. We will smell you all in the next episode.